After six days of intensive field work, collecting, taking photographs, recording videos, I decided to hit the fruit market in Puyo, Ecuador to see what kind of plants they got. I wasn't prepared for how cool this little market would be. This place felt like a museum of the region's ethnobotany, so I took my time lurking around, taking photographs, and studying the plants that they had for sale. Today we're going to talk about the ethnobotany of those plants. First up was this plate of giant weevil larvae, the South American palm weevil, Rhynchophorus palmarum. They're parasites of palm trees, and that's palm wood you can see in this little tray right here. I'm told they taste delicious. You can eat them raw, or you can kebab them. The family that they're in, the Kerkulianids, are a family of weevil-like beetles that we frequently encountered in the forest of all different species and sizes. Oh, the hell yeah, we're going to dig right in. Look at these beetle grubs. Beautiful. Yummy, yummy. They've been eaten for centuries, and one of their most important host plants is a plant I'm about to show you right here. Bactris gasipes is also known as the peach palm, and it's a very common palm in the forest here. There's actually quite a few palms that we kept seeing in the rainforest. Wild to see such large palms. You normally associate them with deserts in North America, but here they like these humid tropical forests. This fruit was delicious, but it needs to be cooked because it's got calcium oxalate crystals in it. It tastes kind of like squash. You peel that skin off with a knife and then you chow down. It literally tastes like kabocha squash. It's pretty good. Yeah, you can see, look, they got a nice, right there, they got a nice meal they've made from that chanta, from the peach palm. It tastes just like squash, full of pigments, full of beneficial phytochemicals and uh, carotenoid pigments, etc. And this one you gotta be careful with the yellow dragon fruit, Selena Sirius Megalanthus, Cactus Family, Cactaceae. They taste delicious. But if you have four like I did, you're going to end up getting diarrhea. They're the most delicious laxative I've ever tasted. It could be a problem, too, because none of the public bathrooms in Ecuador seem to have free toilet paper. Next up was Hibiscus sabdorifa, the source of a tea known throughout Latin America as Jamaica. It's delicious as hell, though frequently it's oversweetened. Though technically what you're looking at are only the sepals and the epicalyx. There's 300 species of hibiscus and all of them produce flowers that have an epicalyx, that lower ring of spiky bracts beneath the bigger ones. The petals, the corolla, is white and it has fallen off. It's no longer on these flowers. Next to bananas and oranges, this hibiscus was one of the few non-native plants that I encountered on the market. This species was originally cultivated in West Africa beginning around 4 or 5,000 BC. Next up was Theobroma cacao, a member of the cotton family Malvaceae. I'd never actually tasted the white pulp around the seeds before, and it tastes like a combination of mango and pink lemonade. It's acidic as hell, and you can tell it's rich in vitamin C and other important phytonutrients, and it's absolutely delicious. Chocolate is actually made from the ground-up fermented seeds, which have a pinkish-purple color, which you can see after you've chewed the white, delicious pulp off. You can actually chew up and eat the seeds, too, but they don't taste like chocolate. The cocoa flavor comes as a result of the five days of microbial activity by yeast and bacteria during the fermentation process. The flowers on cacao are tiny, and they're pollinated by little gnats. Once those flowers are pollinated, it takes five to six months for the fruit to mature, at which point that tiny ovary that was inside the flower swells to about a thousand times its size. And next up was the Nona Muricata, also known as Soursop, which is in the same family as our native North American pawpaw, Ananaceae, a somewhat early evolving angiosperm lineage. It's said they even taste like each other. Now these racks of leaves up here, one of my favorite ethnobotanical specimens. This is Ilex Wyusa, a delicious coffee replacement that's loaded with caffeine and plenty of other phytonutrients. Like Yerba Mate and the native North American Yaw Pond, it's in the genus of Holly, the genus Ilex. The family is Aquafoliaceae. Right here we got rambutan, which tastes kind of like lychee, which makes sense because they're both in the maple and soapberry family, sap and daisy. You get your platinos, and then you got inga edulis, this massive bean, ice cream bean. Ah yes, the ice cream bean, one of 300 species in the genus inga, which is in the pea family fabaceae. They're literally beans. Except in this case, that leguminous fruit can get over a meter long. 
The fruit tastes really good, but once again, you eat that mesocarp, that white pulp around the seed, and then spit out the seed. It's an ingenious evolutionary strategy because it means humans are going to be inadvertently dispersing and planting your seed whenever they're finished eating the delicious fruit around it. And indeed, ice cream bean, or Inga edulis as it's known, is a frequent volunteer encountered in disturbed areas in the upper Amazon. Then they got all these uh all these bags made from which is made from the fiber of a palm the chambira palm Australcarium chambira very strong textured fiber you could see they dye it too i wonder what they use for the dye and of course they got palo santo wood which is berseraceae the frankincense family same order as poison ivy you got the uh, banisteriopsis ayahuasca vine they got cat's claw which is, uh, you can make a tea out of, medicinal tea, and it just tastes good. Ruby AC coffee family. And of course we got Copal as well. Big chunks of Copal for like a dollar. Smells incredible, smells divine. It's like, a, it's like a sacred incense. You know, if you were brought up Catholic though, it might give you PTSD. You gotta be careful with that. She told me these are good for, you know, STD, ball problems. You get like a prostate or something, you know, you got a prostate issue. You know, or you got the clap or something, that's, that's, that's what that's good for. You can see they got a giant bag of it there. It's probably in high demand. Now these beautiful beads were something else. I encountered them frequently. You could see they're just beans. They're in the legume family, not surprisingly. They look like our native North American coral beans in the genus Erythrina, but they're in the genus Ormosia, which is native to Southeast Asia and Central America and contains 150 species. Now this was one of the most ubiquitous plants that we encountered everywhere. It's highly useful. Looking at that fruit, you'd think that Crescentia cujete was in the cucumber family, Cucurbitaceae, but it's actually in the Catalpa family, Bignoniaceae, and those bowls are made from the epicarp of the fruit. The inside of that big round fruit is filled with white mealy pulp that contains many seeds, but that epicarp is really what's used the most. Ah, chayote, Sicios edulis. Who doesn't love chayote, which is actually in the cucumber family, Cucurbitaceae. And Manahat esculenta, or cassava as it's more commonly known, is only one of a hundred species in the genus Manahat, family Euphorbiaceae. And it's right here, the babaco, or mountain papaya as it's commonly known, is actually a sterile hybrid. It's a cultivar in the papaya family Caracaceae, order of mustards Brassicales. And I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure that this is Rubus coriaceus, a native high altitude raspberry. In the corn that we frequently encountered was this large kernel stuff, which of course is just the grass, but had a very distinct taste to it. And then this thing right here was one of the most delicious fruits I've tasted, Cararbia cordata, which is in the cotton family, Malvaceae. And of course, we can't forget tree tomato, Solanum bataceum, which actually doesn't like it too hot. It's got a rather weird taste to it. I wasn't too into it, to be honest. And yet another delicious fruit from the pawpaw family, Anona cherimola, also known as cherimoya, which Mark Twain called the most delicious fruit known to Maine. And what better plant to end it with than once again, my favorite one, Ilex Wayusa, which we drank all the time. You often drink it in the evening too. We would often roll up on a pot with just three leaves in it and that would be a very light tea. People literally drink Wayusa at all hours of the day. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go f***. Bye.